everything in nature that can be measured falls into one of two categories, scalar or vector. Suppose I ask someone how to get to a particular store and they tell me it's 400 meters away. Would that be enough information? No. What they've given me is the distance or magnitude, which is a scalar quantity. I would also need the direction to the store from my current location. That's exactly what a vector is. A vector includes an extra piece of information that distance alone doesn't have, direction. Therefore, a vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. Common examples of vector quantities include force, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Vectors can be represented on a coordinate system. In the case of two-dimensional vectors, we can use the Cartesian plane to show a visual representation of how vectors operate. The Cartesian plane consists of a horizontal line called the x-axis and a vertical line called the y-axis. These lines are calibrated in the same way a number line is divided. We have zero in the center for both lines. Each axis is uniformly numbered according to the distance between them. If we now add a point B on the Cartesian plane, we can now assign coordinates to the point based on its position. We can do that by tracing a vertical line parallel to the y-axis and a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis. This gives us an x-coordinate of 7 and a y-coordinate of 4. Now let's add a point A. To determine its coordinates, we do the exact same thing. We trace two lines and get an x-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of 1. Notice that we always put the x-coordinate first, a comma, and then the y-coordinate, enclosed in brackets. Note that where the x and y-coordinates meet is called the origin and has coordinates 0, 0. Suppose we want the vector that will take us from point A to point B. We will need to determine how many units to move horizontally and how many units to move vertically. In this case, the vector goes four units horizontally to the right, represented by positive four, and then three units vertically up, represented by positive three. The vector is represented as a single column matrix with the horizontal movement represented on top, while the vertical movement is represented below. For horizontal movement, positive numbers indicate movement to the right, while negative numbers indicate movement to the left. For vertical movement, positive numbers indicate moving upwards, while negative numbers indicate movement downwards. Note that we can also get the vector AB by reversing the points and then subtract. In this case, the vector AB is equal to B minus A. The same values when we manually counted the movement from A to B. Now, what if we want to find the vector BA? To answer this, we can work out how to move to get from point B to point A. We can go four units to the left, represented by negative four, and then three units down, represented by negative three. Note again that we can also get the vector BA by reversing the points and then subtract. In this case, the vector BA is equal to A minus B. The same values we get when we manually counted the movement from B to A. When you compare the two vectors AB and BA, you will notice something that's fundamental to vectors. The signs are different. This is key. Change of direction of a vector is indicated by a change of sign of the numbers. For example, if we have an arbitrary vector PQ equal to 2, 7, what is the vector QP? You are correct, minus 2, minus 7. Let's talk about position vectors. A position vector is a vector that represents the position of a point relative to the origin. Hence, the position vector of a point P is represented as OP, where O is the origin. For example, suppose the point P is located at 3, 4. Its position vector is OP equal 3, 4, since to get from the origin to the point P, we move three units to the right along the x-axis and four units up along the y-axis. By the way, 
The vector OP can also be found by reverse subtraction, P minus O. That means a position vector of a point and the point itself will always have the same values, except that the vector is expressed in column form. Position vectors help us to describe the location of points and play a vital role in geometry, physics, and vector algebra. To find the length or magnitude of a vector, we can use the formula on the screen. We substitute 3 and 4 for x and y, respectively. Note the symbol used to represent the length of the vector. In the end, the magnitude is 5 units. By the way, this formula directly comes from Pythagoras' theorem. The length of the vector is the hypotenuse of the triangle. The x and y components of the vector act as the lengths of the two short sides of this triangle. Now, Pythagoras' theorem tells us that the hypotenuse square is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The other two sides are 3 and 4, so we can substitute these values to get 5 units for the hypotenuse which represents the length or magnitude of the vector. A unit vector is a vector that has a magnitude of exactly one, but it retains the same direction as the original vector. It's often used to standardize directions in physics, engineering, and mathematics. The formula for finding a unit vector is simple. You take the original vector and divide it by its length or magnitude, as you can see on the screen. Note the symbol used to represent a unit vector, a hat. For example, the vector V seen here has a magnitude of five units, so its unit vector would be one-fifth of the original vector. In the next lesson, we will look at some other subtopics on vectors. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.